Won't you stand with me? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Reach down and grab your Bible or your instrument of Scripture. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hold it up to the Lord. Just say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. for the written Word of God. I confess Jesus is my Lord, and I receive the written Word that I might know Him. I believe the Word of God is truth that sets me free. I receive the Word into my heart, into my mind, changing me, transforming me by the power of God. I place a demand upon the anointing of God to impart unto me the truth I need to live victorious. Thank you, Lord, for the Word of God. I receive it. I'll be a doer of it. For all the glory, all the praise, I'll give to you. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to turn with me, if you will, to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Ephesians chapter 6, you know, the Apostle Paul is, is, is speaking out to the church of Ephesus. He had a great part in getting that church started and, and establishing it and getting it, you know, into doing what God had called to do, reaching all of Asia Minor there in about a two-year period, if you go over in Acts and read it. They started on fire, praise God. And they started off with a great passion. You know, he found him a handful of people there and asked them if they'd been received the Holy Ghost. And these men said no, hadn't heard of it. So he, he shared the gospel with them, got them filled with the Holy Ghost. And then they began to teach the Word and reached the, that entire area. And so Paul's writing to them here. And, and here in the sixth chapter, he's finishing up everything. He's going to bring to them the thoughts that he wants to finish with. And he says here in verse 10, Finally, my brethren. So, so we know he's, going, he's finishing this thing up. And he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. You know, Paul is telling us right here as he's finishing up this, this message, this letter, he's saying, now the thing you've got to learn is this, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in your relationship with the Lord. Be strong in, in your, your unity with the Lord. Say, draw your strength from your, your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't try to do it all in yourself. Make sure that everything that you do, you do it through Him. And He becomes your strength. He becomes your help. He becomes one who's going to put you over. Amen? And then, he, then He tells us this. He says in verse 11, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the strategies and schemes and plans of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Now, notice here, Paul is finishing up this letter to the church, to believers. He's writing to Christians, spirit-filled Christians. Amen? And, and he tells them here, now be strong in your walk with God. Be strong in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he tells them why. He says, now put on the whole armor of God. Put on God's armor. Put on God's weaponry. And he says, the reason being is this. He said, you're going to have to stand up against the strategies and the plans and the schemes and the wiles that the devil's going to throw at you. Amen. And he says, listen, don't get caught up in a flesh and blood fight. Don't be contentious with other people. Don't get your eyes on the natural. Realize that your real fight is a spiritual fight. And notice he says there, put on this complete armor so that in the day of evil you can stand. Notice that? So that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Didn't say if you have an evil day. He said in the evil day. Are oh, you listening to me? Right. See, you got to understand something here, folks. If you're going to live for God, that doesn't mean you're exempt from being tempted, tested, and tried of the devil. Right. Doesn't mean you're not going to have some days you're going to have to stand and act on this word and, and, and walk in it and make it work for you. Amen? In fact, I like what the Amplified says. It talks over there. He says, put on the, the, the whole armor of God that you may successfully be able to stand up against all the strategies of the devil. So Paul is telling them here, he says, I want you to be successful against the devil. I want you to be successful against the plans that he's got for you. I want you to be successful when the enemy's trying to take you down. And he says, the way you do that is you go into every test strong in the Lord. You go in every test armed with God. You go in every test with your, with your eyes wide open realizing that, that, you know, this is a part of it. 
Amen. The apostle Peter said, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial that's about to try you. Now, you know, a lot of people, you know, they get in a, in a test or something and they just squirrel out on you. Amen. Amen. Just, just bug out. Oh my God, what's going on? Oh, why is it happening to me? I, I go to church. I read my Bible. I'm, I'm a faith person. This shouldn't be happening to me. Why is this happening to me? Did I miss it or something? It could be you're, you're just, you know, alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. And it just could be an evil day. How many of you realize that you just don't just get up one day and say, this is going to be an evil day. Yeah. I just choose this to be my evil day. Amen. Doesn't happen, does it? No. The devil's the one that tries, you know, decides evil days. What's an evil day? Anything that's not producing blessing in your life. Any test, any trial, any attack against you, that's the enemy's strategy to take you out of the success and the blessing of God and bring you back down into defeat. Amen? Now, Paul says that we're to put on this whole armor of God so we can successfully stand up against these things, and we can defeat these strategies when they come against us, and we can defeat these demon forces when they're, we're out here and, and doing the, what God's called us to do, and we can be overcomers in this life. Now, here's the thing you've got to understand. Paul started this lesson by telling us that we were blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly place in Christ Jesus. He also said that God foreordained that we should be predestined to be part of Christ and that we've been redeemed by His blood and that we're, you know, we're heirs with God and that you know, we've received the earnest of the inheritance. And then he gets into a prayer there in that first chapter and he says this in the latter part of that prayer in verse 19, And what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us who believe according to the working of His mighty strength which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated him in heavenly places far above all principality, power, might, dominion. And the Amplified says, in every name and every title that can be conferred upon anything in this age and in the one to come. And then he goes on and says that he raised Jesus up, made him the supreme universal head of the church, a headship he exercises in the church, which is his body, and he fills us all up with himself. Now, what is Paul doing here? Paul is saying Jesus has already defeated the devil. Jesus has already triumphed over these demons. And because Jesus has already triumphed over the devil and has already triumphed over demons, now if you'll put on the armor of God and be strong in the Lord Jesus, you can whip them too. Are you listening to me? The only reason you can whip an evil day is because Jesus has already whipped the source of that evil day before you ever go into it. And so Paul is speaking to us here, and he's warning us, just because the Lord Jesus dethroned these demons, powers and principalities, and just because he destroyed Satan's power of, of, of authority, and he's now Lord, you got to understand, Jesus still has to exercise that lordship through you. He has to exercise his power through you, and you and I now have to put on this armor, and we have to walk in this truth. We have to walk in this victory. We have to walk in this, this uh, you know, anointing that God has prepared for us. Amen? And he's warning us here that the devil's going to come in and do all he can do to get you to look weak, defeated, broke, foolish, discourage you. Amen. So he says, here's what you do. You put on this whole armor of God. Then notice what he starts talking to you about here. He says, and, and, and having done all to stand, in other words, you do what you're supposed to do. Now take your stand in faith with God. And then he says this, stand therefore, and then he starts listing things. Now, here's the thing. You, there, there's an order in the way this is listed, and, and you need to understand something. God never does anything just to do it. Are you listening to me? There's a reason God would list these things in order. There's a reason God says things the way he says it. God doesn't just haphazardly or randomly say something. If he says something, you need to listen to why and what he's saying and how he's saying it because there's a reason the way he, because of what he's saying and, and there's a reason behind why he's saying it that way, amen? Now notice something here, <coughs> if you look at this. He says, verse 14, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Now in John 17, 17, Jesus said, Sanctify them with thy truth, thy word is truth. Yes. Now notice here that the Lord says, Start off with, tr with truth. Amen. If you're going to take a stand against the devil, the first thing you're going to do is have to take a stand on the truth of the Word of God. Amen. Amen. See, there's no use standing up against the attack of the devil if you don't know what the truth is. 
That's right. Amen. Listen, the devil comes in and, and puts symptoms on you and tells you you're sick and it's God's will and you don't know the truth about it. You don't have anything to stand on. Amen. But the devil comes and hits you. Well, you're not going to make it this time. Well, you've got truth. The Bible says no, and all these things, we're more than conquerors to him that loves us. Amen. I am going to make it, praise God. So the very first thing I'm going to do before I take my stand is I'm going to know what the truth of the matter is. Well, you're not going to get healed this time. I don't need to get healed this time. I already got healed. Jesus healed me 2,000 years ago. By his stripes, I was healed. Amen. Now, I can either walk in the truth of your symptoms, or I can walk in the truth of the Word of God. Amen. So, so, so the Apostle Paul says, when you start putting this stuff on, the first thing you've got to do is arm yourself in the truth of God's Word. Amen? Then the second thing he says here is this. He says, and then he says, having on the breastplate of righteousness. See, if you're going to take a stand against the enemy and walk in victory, the second thing, after you make up your mind, you're going to stand on the truth of God's Word, you're going to have to walk in your right standing with God. You're going to have to believe you're righteous. Why? Because James 5 says the prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. Amen? The Bible says that the righteous are to rule and reign in this life. My righteousness with God is what gives me the ability to stand in His presence without any sin, guilt, inferiority, condemnation, or whatever in my life. Amen? No consciousness of it. And so the second thing I've got to do is I've, I can't doubt my walk with God. Are you listening to me? See, a lot of Christians today, they don't know, they don't have a clue as to what the truth of the thing is, what's the Word say. And then the second thing is, they don't know if they're worthy yet or not, whether they can do it or not. Well, the Bible says, if you're going to walk in the power of God, number one, you better get some truth operating in you. And number two, you better understand that you've been made righteous in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? You're walking in right standing with God. Second, then through righteousness. Then thirdly, he says this, and that your feet be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Notice the gospel of peace. Isn't that amazing? He says, start off, if, when you take your stand, number one, get the truth about it so you understand what you're going to fight with. Number two, get in, right, get in your righteousness and make sure you know you're right with God. And then number three, let the peace of God that passes all understanding take hold of you. Get into peace. How many of you found out you can't fight in faith and be in fear and turmoil and worry and, huh? Yeah, right, right. You better get you some peace operating in you. How do you get the peace operating in you? The gospel. You get on the Word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Whew. Hallelujah. See, peace does not mean there's an absence of conflict. Peace means that you're hooked up with God right in the midst of the conflict. Amen. It means that you're trusting God. It means you're not going to be shaken. You're not going to be moved. You're going to be quick to respond with what the Word says. Hallelujah. And I, every time the enemy hits me with care and worry, I'm just going to cast it over on the Lord. Every time the devil comes and tells me it's not going to work, I just go, no, I cast that off. I, I, it's got to work because God's backing it. Amen. Amen. And if God's behind it, it it's got to work. Hallelujah. So I got peace. Amen. And then he goes on and he says this, take the shield of faith wherewith you're able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now notice this, that he doesn't get into faith until you get into truth. Then you walk in righteousness. Then you get in the peace. Now, now your faith will work. See, a lot of people trying to get right over in faith when the enemy comes in like a flood. And you know the trouble is you're, you're in turmoil, you're in fear, you're in worry. You don't have anything to base your faith on. You don't know what the truth is. Remember in John chapter 8, 31, 32, Jesus said to those Jews that believed on him, he said, if you continue in my word, then you'll know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Amen. Amen. See, you always start with truth. God starts with truth. Then, he, in that truth, you begin to say, praise God, I'm righteous with God. I got right standing with God. That means my faith will work. And then number three, he says this. What? I'm going to get into peace. I'm just going to put all my trust in God. And I'm going to walk in peace and know that God's going to get me through this thing. Now that I'm in peace, I can start speaking my faith. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now I'm talking faith. Now I'm walking faith. Praise God. Now it's not hope. It's faith. Because it's coming out of my peace and my walk with God. Amen. Then the fourth thing he said to do is put on the helmet of salvation. Why? He wants you to think what God thinks all the way through this. See, the helmet covers your mind. Praise God. Covers your brain. 
How many of you know that the devil's going to attack you in the thought realm? Amen. The Bible says over in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, he says that our weapons are mighty through God to what? To the pulling down of strongholds. Well, what are those strongholds? They, oh, there must be these devils out here. No, 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 no. Read what he says strongholds are. Casting down vain imaginations, reasonings, arguments, and bringing every thought. Uh-oh. The stronghold must be between years. Amen. In your brain. It's in your mind. So what's he say? Bring in every thought into captivity to Christ. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put on the mind of Christ. I'm going to think like a saved man. Are you listening to me? I'm going to think like somebody that's born again. I'm going to think like somebody that's got a covenant with God. I'm going to think like somebody's in, walk, in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not going to think like somebody's got doing it on his own. I'm going to think like I've got the greater one dwelling on the inside of me. If God be for me, who can be against me? I'm going over and all under. Blessed be God. I've got faith, and my faith overcomes, and I'm going to win this thing. Praise God. And every time the devil hits my mind with a thought that is not going to work, I'm going to cast it down, bring those thoughts in the captivity of Christ and keep the helmet of salvation on. Amen? Amen. And that helmet, I'm going to look at it the way God looks at it. I'm going to hear it the way God hears it. I'm going to say it the way God says it and think it the way God wants me to think it. Amen? Amen. See, Paul is laying these things out to us, and he's teaching us how to win on the evil day. He's teaching us how to defeat the devil in our life. He's teaching us how to walk in all these blessings that God has given us. Now, notice here, once you get all these things on, he says down here then in this 17th verse, and take the sword of the Spirit. Everybody say sword of the Spirit. Sword of the Spirit. Notice that. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Yeah, you know, I read that for years, and, and, you know, you just read things, and you think you know it, and then one day it jumps out at you. And, 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 and I, I got to read that, the sword of the Spirit. And then I get to read and amplify, and it says, you know, the, 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 the sword of the Spirit that the Spirit wields, the sword that the Spirit wields. And, and then the Lord spoke to me and said, notice that sword is a weapon. He said, say it like this, and the weapon of the Spirit. He said, you know what the weapon that the Spirit is? He said, you know what my weapon of choice is? See, every, every warrior has a weapon of choice. Something that you're specialized in, amen? Something that you're going to use in every situation. If you get to choose, you get to, you're going to choose this weapon, amen? Well, God said the weapon of my choice is the Word of God. Because he said the sword that the Spirit wills or uses is the Word of God. But the word W-O-R-D here in the Greek is rhema. Amen? So he says take the sword of the Spirit or the weapon of God, which is the rhema. What is rhema? Utterance or the spoken word. So we could say it like this, and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the rhema, the spoken word of God, and stand against them. So what's the final thing he says? He says, once you've clothed yourself in God, gotten strong in your walk with the Lord, once you've gotten over there and you've got the truth, you know what you're going to stand on. Now he says, you know, you're walking in your righteousness. Now you've got your faith working on that truth. Now you've got your helmet on so you're thinking right and you're believing right. He says, now take the word and begin to speak the word against the enemy's attacks and the sword of the Spirit will defeat the enemy. Are you listening to me? God's Word spoken out of your mouth is the choice weapon that God wants you to use. Why? Because it's the weapon God uses. Everything God does, He does it by speaking the Word. Everything God has ever made, He's made by the spoken Word. Isaiah said in the 55th chapter, he said over there, he said, no Word of God will ever return to Him without producing what it was sent to do. Isn't that amazing? It'll not return void. It'll produce exactly what he sent it to do, praise God. God created everything through the spoken word. He spoke it out, and it had to come to pass, praise God. And now Paul writing here, he says, here's how you get strong in the Lord. Here's how you defeat the strategies of the devil. Here's how you as a Christian now put together all of these things that I've taught you and all these things that I've given to you. Here's how you defeat the enemy on your evil day. He says, you arm yourselves in these things, and the final thing you've got to do is you've got to put the word of God in your mouth. You've got to speak it, praise God. Now, look over here in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, real quick. Hebrews, chapter 4, down here in verse 12. 
the apostle writing here to the Hebrew Christian says it like this. For the word of God is quick or alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. <clears throat> now notice here, God says, for the word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. With the W-R-D here, that word is, in the Greek is logos. He says, the logos of God, the written word of God is alive. Amen. See, this Bible is a living book. Amen. This word that's written down here is more powerful than anything that could ever come against you. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. I like it. That means it'll cut both ways. I mean, you can get the enemy on the forehand and the backhand. Amen. Praise God. And so he said it's sharper than any two edged sword. But here's the thing you've got to understand, folks. This word, even though it is powerful and it's alive and it's sharper than any two edged sword, it will still not produce anything in your life until it is released by acting on it, believing it, and saying it. Amen. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about this. I can carry this Bible around and die. Say I'll be real honest with you. I can be a sinner and carry this Bible around and tell everybody this is a living book. This is God's book. This is written by God, inspired of God. It's alive. It's got the power in it to save me. It's got the power in it to heal me. It's got the power in it to deliver me and die in my sins and go to hell. I can believe the Bible. There are a lot of Christians today. You go up to them, you say, you believe the Word of God is alive? Yes, sir. You believe the Word of God's got the power to deliver you and heal you? Yes, sir. How you doing? I don't know if God don't come through for me. I'm just not going to make it. <laughs> well, I thought you just told me that you, you believe the Word of God has the power to deliver you. I do. I just know it's just not working. Well, it's not going to work just as long as it's laying on your coffee table. It's not going to work because you carry it back and forth to church. See, God is speaking to us saying this word has the power within it to do whatever it needs to be done in your life. But Paul says over there, it doesn't become a sword or a weapon until it becomes a spoken word. Amen? You can't take your Bible and throw it at the devil. But you can put it in your heart and speak it out your mouth and cut him in shreds. You can stop him in his tracks. Amen. In fact, the Bible tells us that Jesus is our example. How did the Lord Jesus defeat the devil? Well, let's find out. Look in Luke's gospel, the fourth chapter. Luke chapter 4. Praise God. Now, if you came here looking for some deep new revelation, you may be disappointed. Because I've been preaching this stuff now since 1978, and I'm not going to change. Because it's got me through every scrape that the enemy's ever thrown at me. It's got me healed every time he's tried to get me sick. It's caused my bills to be paid every time he's tried to pile them up on me. It's helped me to build the ministry and touch people's lives. It's helped me to go around the world and preach the gospel, and I ain't going to change now. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Too many of us are looking for something new when we need to go back and redig some of the stuff that we already knew. We need to go by and get refreshed in the truth. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we hear it and we say, oh, I heard that before. Well, faith doesn't come by having heard. Faith comes by hearing. That means you've got to keep the word present tense all the time. Amen. Praise God. And if you'll notice, I'm preaching this just like I ain't never preached it before. Because every time I open up the word of God, to me, it's just like it's a brand new message. Hallelujah. And I'm not trying to preach down at you. I, I just don't take for granted anybody knows it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, and I'll be real honest with you. The reason I do that is God, because God got on me. I, I, I was uh, praying one day, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, uh, I want you to put on this message here. And I found an old cassette tape, and it was Confession Brings Possession. Brother Kenneth Hagin preached it back in the 60s, first time where this tape came from. And so I put that on and listened to it. And so, uh, you know, I got finished listening to it, and I said, yeah, that was good. Praise God, that just reminded me of the good old days. And so then the Lord said, now I want you to listen to this one. And it was a Confession Brings Possession by Kenneth Hagin that I got in the 90s. 
And I put it on. And I thought, well, I just listened to that. You know, it was almost verbatim. I mean, he just preached it right down the line. And I listened to it. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, there was about 30 years difference in that message from the first time it was recorded and to the one you recorded. I said, yes, sir. He said, was there any lack of passion the second time? I said, no, sir. He said, Brother Hagin preached the word as if it was never preached before every time he preached it. He said, that's why it was so powerful, because it was always alive. Yeah. It was always new truth. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And the Lord said, you preach it like everybody's heard it before. He said, quit doing that. Right. He said, every time you preach anything on faith or whatever, you preach it like ain't nobody ever heard it before. And he said, if it's new to you, it'll be new to everybody else. Amen. So praise God, you just need to stay with me because I'm preaching to this to you just like I don't think you ever heard it before in your life. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm the first person ever taught you this. Amen. Now, I may not be, but you might as well just humor me and go along with it because I'm going to treat you that way. Hallelujah. Amen? So what, what do we find out? We, we see the Lord speaking through the Apostle Paul, and he's telling you as a believer, I mean, he's already told them they're accepted in the beloved in Ephesians. He's already told them that they've got giftings. He's already told them that, you know, they're to put off the old man, put on the new. He's already told them that God's given them a, a vocation and a calling. He's told them about being a part of the church. He's talked to them about, you know, uh, you know husband-wife relationships and mom and dad and kids relationships and, and how to treat each other and about being filled with the Holy Ghost. Then he says, now you're going to have some evil days. Even though you're born again, spirit-filled, walking in the Word, you're still going to have the enemy coming against you. And when he does, here's what you do. Amen. And he starts laying this truth out to him. And then he tells us over here in Hebrews, he says, now this logos, this written Word, is alive too. It's alive. This Word is alive. That's why it works when you speak it. If it didn't have any life to it, you could talk it all day long and it wouldn't work for you. Amen. It takes something that's alive to defeat something else. Amen. And so now, how do we make it work? Well, the Lord Jesus was our example. Luke chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says it like this, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted forty days of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing, and when he was, they were ended, he afterward hungered. Now, notice here, I, I was studying this out. And, and, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, notice that after I was filled with the Spirit, I was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. I said, yeah. He said, do you, you understand why that was done? I said, well, I've had some ideas about it, but I, I don't understand. Oh, he said, I did it all for you. I said, what? He said, the reason I was led into the Spirit, he says, remember reading over there in Hebrews 2 and Hebrews 4 talks about, he says that I was, I was tempted in, in every area just like you without sin. He said, I went through everything you'd ever have to go through so I could be a merciful, faithful high priest and minister and help you when you were going through it. I said, yes, sir. He said, I went into the wilderness to show you what you have to do if you ever find yourself in a wilderness. Made sense to me. He said, everything I did on earth was to be an example to you, to show you how to operate in the same word and make it work for you. Aren't you glad Jesus went back into the wilderness and put himself in a bad situation just so he could show us how to come out of it? Yeah. So he could show us how to operate in the power of God? Because how many of you in here have ever found yourself in a wilderness? What's a wilderness? It's a dry place. It's a place when the enemy's coming against you and it doesn't look good, doesn't feel good, it's not a happy time. Amen? Now, notice here that the enemy comes in after Jesus is hungry. He's tired. He's been there 40 days. He didn't come in in the beginning. Have you ever noticed that? Jesus got filled with the Spirit. The power of God came on him. I mean, he's full of the Holy Ghost. I mean, woo, hallelujah. Let's go celebrate. Notice the devil waited until he was 40 days into his fast and hungry. You ever notice that? The devil doesn't show up the first day whenever you had just got filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, running around the building. He'll wait a couple of days until that wears off, won't he? Amen. Huh? So he caught him at, at, at his tired moment. Anybody ever found out the enemy likes to hit you when you're tired? Jesus was alone. He'll try to hit you when you're alone. 
used to have a friend of mine. He used to say it all the time. He said, it's the lone banana that gets peeled. Amen. So stay with the bunch. <laughs> Praise God. Huh? <laughs> but notice that, that, that the devil comes in here and, and, and hears the Lord. He's by himself. He's hungry. He's tired. He's been out here by himself all this time. And, and, and now here comes the enemy in. Now notice what he does here. And the devil said unto him, If you be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered and said, With a mystical power that nobody knows. <laughs> because I am the Son of God. No, he didn't say any of that, did he? Well, what did Jesus do to whip the devil? What did he do to overcome this evil day? What, what weapon did Jesus choose to use to overcome the attack of the enemy upon his life? Look what he says. And Jesus answered him saying, it is written. Everybody say that. It, it is, is written. My, my, my. Yeah. He went to the Logos. Uh -huh. <laughs> went to the written Word of God. Why? Because the written Word of God is alive powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen? Now notice what he said. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Now, you know what's so good about this? Even if you don't know how to quote the Scripture, if you can find it in the Bible, you can look to the devil and say, look here, Mr. Devil, it's written right here. Amen. Notice that? And you know what happens whenever you go to the Word of God and say, wait a minute, it's written. And you read out the Word and you speak that Word and say, no, no, here's what I'm believing. It's right here, right here. What's it, what it says right here? You know, after you do that a few times and he keeps coming back, after a while you'll remember where it was written. Yeah. 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 And you know what happens when you start remembering where it was written? And you remember what it said? It goes from being logos to rhema. Hallelujah. It goes from being the written word to truth. Amen. Good. See, I, I remember whenever I first got a hold of 1 Peter 2.24, I, I, symptoms that hit me, I'd turn over and read it to the devil. I'd say, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, where's it at? Here it is, 1 Peter 2.24. It says it right here. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin shall live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Ye is me, devil, so if I were, then I am, praise God. So I believe I received my healing because it says so right here. And I do that. Praise God. Notice I didn't have to turn over there this time. Because you see, if you keep turning over there and turning over there and turning over there, amen, after a while you don't have to turn over there anymore, praise God, because it's real to you. Now notice this. The devil didn't quit just because Jesus quoted one scripture to him. Look at the next thing. The devil taking him up on a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world. In a moment of time, the devil said unto him, All this power will I give you, and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me, and whomsoever I will I give it. If you will just worship me, all will be yours. Take a shortcut here. Here, I can give it to you without going to the cross. It's mine. I'll give it to you right here. Just fall down and worship me. How did the Lord deal with that temptation of, of, of you know, compromise? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. For it's written. Look at that. Everything he's doing is with the word of God. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Notice Jesus. And, and folks, you know, there, there can be a whole lot of enthusiasm here and, and inspiration from God. He just said he's been there 40 days and he's hungry yeah. and he's tired. Yeah. And so what's Jesus doing? Right there in his weakest moment, he's speaking the Word of God. And every time he speaks the Word of God, it works. Amen. Amen. And the devil backs up and says, well, he's not going to do that. I might as well hit him with this one. So he tries another thing. And Jesus just turns and takes the Word. Every time the devil's showing up, Jesus is just taking the Word of God. What's he doing? He's exercising his faith. See, folks, here's the thing you've got to understand. <clears throat> All your battles with the devil are not going to be done while you're running around the church going, Shonda, hallelujah, and, 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 you know, glory bumps are running up and down your spine. <laughs> Amen. See, a lot of times we think we can't whip the devil because, you know, I've got to feel that anointing. I've got to get that anointing. And, 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 and we're wanting a, a feeling of some kind. Whether well, you've got a feeling or you've got anything operating out here, or you've got goosebumps or Holy Ghost bumps or anything else running up down your spine, the Word in your heart and in your mouth will win for you every time, praise God. See, the devil come along, you'll speak the Word and tell him what's written, he'll say, well, you didn't feel anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not working for you. Go check it out. 
Notice Jesus didn't debate with him. Jesus didn't argue with him. Jesus didn't answer his questions. Jesus didn't discuss it with him. Jesus just turned and spoke the word. The best thing you could ever do is when the devil's trying to get you to quit is don't argue with him. Yeah. Just turn to the Word of God. Set your focus on the Word of God. Set your focus on your relationship with Jesus. Just, just don't get caught up in the discussion. Amen? I'm not going to discuss it with you, devil. It's none of your business what's going to happen in my life. Amen? Jesus is my Lord. And so I'm going to do what the Word says. I'm going to speak the Word. Now notice again. And he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle in the temple, said unto him, If you be the Son of God, cast yourself down from here. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. And, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, unless you dash your foot against the stone. Notice the devil's quoting the 91st Psalm. He, he quoted that out of context, though. He didn't talk about Jesus treading upon the lion, the adder, and the scorpion. Trampling them on his feet, amen. Didn't talk about that part of it. He just wanted to get him messed up. See, the devil, he'll, he'll talk scripture to you, but he'll talk it out of context. Amen. Some people say, I don't know if that's God speaking to me or not. Did it cause you to go to God or from God? Did it make you go goofy or did it make you go faith? Hallelujah. See, did you go do something doofus or did you do something that was holy and righteous before God? God tells you to do something that'll bring glory to him, amen. So what's the Lord going to do about this? The devil's quoted scripture to him now. Well, let's see. Verse 12, And Jesus answered and said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He just went right back to the Word. Spoke the Word to him. Why? Because the sword of the Spirit is the spoken Word of God. The weapon the Holy Ghost uses against the strategies and the attacks and the lies and the deceptions of the devil is the spoken Word of God. You want to win? You got to start talking the Word. I don't feel it. It don't matter whether you feel it or not. It doesn't say it is feeling that if you don't know. It doesn't say it is written. That's right. Amen? Amen? No, blessed be God, it's written. I don't feel like it, but it's written. Praise God. It's written. It's written. It's written. It's written. There are times, I, you know, I've told Bonnie sometimes, I'll be aggravated about something, and I said, next time you catch me like this, just tell me to go in my office and pray in tongues <laughs> and study the Word. Because, you see, I, I, that's, that's where you get the victory. You just, instead of walking around discussing the problem, discussing the frustration, and getting aggravated, but just stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, wait a minute, I need to get strong in the Lord. The way I get strong in the Lord is I need to go in here and just get before the presence of God and praise Him, pray in the Spirit, and worship God, sing, speaking. You know what I'm saying? Amen. And then I need to get me some truth to stand on. And then I need to remember I'm righteous with God. And then I need to go ahead and get some peace operating in my life. Just know that God's going to get me through this thing. And now I can get my faith to working again, praise God. Now I'm going to get my mind straightened out, and I'm going to put the word in my mouth, and I'm going on the offensive. Hallelujah. Yes. And I'm going to do what the Word says. I'm going to speak the Word into this situation. Now notice here that when the Lord did this, verse 13, and when the devil had ended all the temptations, he departed from him for a season, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Notice here that the power and the glory and the fame and the victory didn't come until after Jesus spoke the Word. Amen. Amen. We want the feeling and then we'll speak it. Amen. Jesus spoke it, then he had the feeling. Amen. Jesus said it, then he got it. He didn't get it, then say it. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. It's true. Come on, church. That's right. I want I'm when I get healed, I'm gonna confess I'm healed. You're gonna to have to confess you're healed while you're sick. Well, when I get all those bills paid, I'm going to confess God supplies all of my need. No, you need to start confessing God supplies all your need long before them bills get paid. Right. Amen. 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 Well, maybe God's holding it back. Not unless you're backslid. Come on now. Psalm 84, 11. See, if you know the truth, you know God's not holding anything back on you. Right. Amen. Amen. Psalm 84, 11 says, He will not withhold any good thing from them that walk uprightly before Him. Praise God. Amen. Wow. So when the devil says, well, maybe God doesn't want you to have it. Well, you, if you know what the truth is, then you, don't have to, you won't fall for that. Well, maybe it's not God's will to heal you. When the devil tells you that, say, maybe it's not God's will that I listen to you. 
Amen. Maybe it's God's will that I speak the word and believe him. I remember when I got filled with the Holy Ghost in, in June of 1977. I'd gotten a hold of some things by Brother Hagin, and uh, actually, we, we were down in Tennessee at a friend of mine's wedding, and on the way back, we stopped and got some books at a bookstore there in Johnson City, and uh, I got seven vital steps to receiving the Holy Ghost was one of them, because I want to get filled with the Holy Ghost. So I took that home and went to work on, on uh, that Tuesday. We didn't get back till Monday evening, so Tuesday I went to work, and when I got back home on that Tuesday evening, that was June the 7th, 1977, if you want to remember what day it is, praise God. But anyway, June the 7th, 1977 was a Tuesday. So I, I got home, and I took the book, and I read Seven Bible Steps Receiving the Holy Ghost, and, and uh, laid it down, got my Bible out, and turned to the Scriptures, and, and told the Lord, Lord, I believe that's right, and I'm going to believe I receive the Holy Ghost right now. I never heard anybody speak in tongues before. We'd gone to some Pentecostal churches, and all they did was pray loud. So I thought, I can do that, so I quit going. Praise God. I went back to my Baptist church. And so, you know, if they ain't going to talk in tongues, I ain't going there. So I, I want to hear somebody talk in tongues. I want to hear what it sounds like. But I couldn't find anybody to do it, so I just thought, well, I'm going to have to believe God and get it myself. And so that evening, I, I, I read the book and prayed the simple prayer that's in that book. And, and about 20 minutes to 8 o'clock, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Prayed till 8 o'clock that evening and, and, and spent about 20 minutes praying in tongues. Went downstairs and told Bonnie, hallelujah, amen. But, but what I want to tell you about is this. As I was reading there, you know, the Bible says over in John 8, 44, that the devil's a liar and the father of all lies. Amen. Can't tell the truth. Well, as I was kneeling down there and praying, I, I sent something coming up. And, 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 you know, Brother Hagin had instructed in his, his book, he says, whatever it is, just say it out by faith. And it's your faith working with the Holy Spirit that will release that prayer language. So I just did what he said. I, I, that sounds right to me. So I went ahead and did it. And, and, and some words started coming up out of my spirit. And, I, and I, I received my prayer language right there, praying in tongues. First person I ever heard speak in tongues was me. Amen. And so, you know, and so I'd been praying in tongues for about five minutes, and the words were coming. And, and just, just like, you know, I didn't look, but just like right off to my left, about three feet off to my left, just behind me, just like the devil stood right there, behind, he just walked right up behind me. And he said this, he said, you know that's not God, that's you making that up. And they already know you're a little strange down at the Baptist church. Now they're going to think you done fell off the... the, the you know. He said, that's not God. And, 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 the, and as I'm praying in, the, in my language, this, this new language God's given me, the thought came, the Holy Ghost, first time he ever brought something to my remembrance. He said, John 8, 44, the devil's a liar and father of it. <laughs> yes. And so I'm praying in tongues. I stopped praying in tongues, opened my eyes, and looked, of course, I couldn't see anything. But I turned around, and I said, Mr. Devil, I want to thank you. You know, you're here telling me that I'm not praying in tongues since you're a liar and you can't say anything but lies then I must be praying in tongues. And so I want to thank you for giving me confirmation that I've been baptized in the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues. So I'm going to go ahead and pray in tongues and worship God. And I went and knelt back right down. He just scattled right on out of there. Amen. Praise God. You see, you don't want to entertain thoughts of doubt and unbelief. Right, right. That's why you got to put on the armor. That's why you got to be strong in the Lord. And then that's why you got to know what the truth is. Well, thank God the Holy Ghost will help you to speak that truth and, and use it as a sword against these lies and thoughts that are coming against your mind. But you've got to be the one that does it. Amen. You've got to speak these things out. You've got to make up your mind that you're going to do these things. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, can I do those things? Well, I'm glad you asked. Look in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Praise God. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and verse 13. We could quote it to you, but it'd do you good to read it out of your Bible. Look what he says. Paul writing here to the Corinthians, look what he says. We having the same spirit of faith. Woo, glory to God. Look at that. I've got the spirit of faith. Amen. Yeah. Amen. What's that mean? The anointing of faith. The force of faith. The law of faith. The God kind of faith. We having the same spirit of faith. Amen. See, there's one thing of just, just having a, a mental ascent, but there's another thing of having that spiritual law and spiritual force operating in your life. Amen. God didn't just give you a theory. He gave you an anointing. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's good. Amen. We having the same spirit of faith. The first thing you're going to have to get a hold of right now, if you're going to walk in victory, if you're going to overcome the devil and walk in and, and defeat him out of your life, is you're going to have to believe that God has given you the spirit of faith. Amen. Amen. Yes. Your faith is a spiritual force that will work to stop the enemy in his tracks. You have a faith that is of the Spirit of God that has the power to move mountains. You have the faith that is of the Spirit of God that has the power to reach heaven, that has the power to move the hand of God, that has the power to get your prayers answered, that has the power to cause God's Word to work in your life. Amen? We having the same spirit of faith. You can't say, boy, I wish I had the faith of that person. And no, you don't need that. You got the faith of God when you got born again. Amen? Amen? You have the same spirit of faith. Now, notice what he says here. What are we going to do? How's this faith built? We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed. What's my believing based on? What's written? What's the spirit of faith operate on? The written word of God. There's nothing mystical about this. Yeah. Nothing confusing. N n nothing hard to understand. The spirit of faith operates on what is written in the book. It operates according to what is written. Whatever is written in here, the spirit of faith just says, I believe that's so. I just take God at his word. I just believe God will do that. Amen. 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 Somebody says, oh, you can't live like that. You'll get defeated. That's what they told Paul over in Romans chapter 8. But he said, nay, 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 no, no, no. In all these things, we're more than conquerors to him that loves us. Amen. Uh, it may look like we're sheep bled to the slaughter, but no, 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 no. In all these things, in all these things. Oh, my God, if you list the list that he listed. Yeah. Famine, peril, nakedness, sword. I mean, you know, all kinds of trouble going on. And he said, no, it doesn't matter what the devil throws at you. In all these things, we're more than conquerors. To him that loves us. Hallelujah. Notice what he says. He says, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed. That's simple, isn't it? Yeah. I'm just going to read it and meditate on it until I believe it. Come on. That's right. Then you know how I'm going to know I believe it? And therefore have I spoken. Yeah. Yeah, well, no. Now, how does it work for me? We also believe and therefore speak. Amen. Jesus believed what was written, turned and looked the devil square in the eye and said, here's what the Word says, and walked on. Amen. Yeah. That's right. And the devil said, that ain't going to work. So he got his clipboard out, went down the next list, said, let's try him with this one. And he hit him with something, and Jesus said, no, this is what's written. I believe that, and he spoke the word to him. Yeah. The devil said, that didn't work either. And so let's try this one last thing. Mm -hmm. And he threw that at him. You know, there are times, folks, in your battle of faith, the first time you say the word, you may not get the victory. Yeah. You may just get a victory. Yeah. Amen. Are you listening to me? Jesus got a victory, then he got another victory, then he got another victory, then he got the victory. Amen. See, every walk of faith doesn't mean the mountain immediately is jumped and thrown into the sea. Sometimes it's thrown into the sea bits and pieces. Amen. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. And see, a lot of times the reason we get defeated is because we, we get a little relief and we think the battle's over. Yeah. And then something hits us again, and we get confused, and we quit and give up. But what you've got to do is realize, hey, wait a minute. Until the angels come and minister to me, until all the symptoms are gone, until the devil's totally under my feet, there's still a battle going on. And I'm going to stay in faith, stay in the Word, keep speaking the Word, and I'm going to come out of this thing and, and stay on until I'm on top. Amen? Amen. See, I'm fighting to win, not just fighting to get through. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Come on. Amen. When I'm believing God to get healed, it's not to feel better. Yeah. I'm believing to get healed. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Whenever I'm believing God to get the money to pay the bill, I'm not believing God to just make it through till the next time it comes up. I'm believing God for Him to supply all of my need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I want to win this thing. Amen. Yeah. 
And so God has spoken through the Apostle Paul, and he says, God has done all these things to you, but now it comes down to you doing it. Now you're going to have to walk in this stuff. Now you're going to have to take that word, put it in your mouth, make it truth in your life, and believe, and every time you start wavering, just go back to where it's written, renew it in your mind, renew it in your heart, put it back in your mouth, and sling it like a sword. Hallelujah. Amen. And he said, you can have what you say. Amen. It'll work for you every time. Amen? Amen? Somebody said, are you sure it'll work for you every time? If it doesn't work every time, then God doesn't work every time. Amen. How many of you know every time you go in the battle, you know, that doesn't mean that you're not going to get, get a scrape here and there. Yeah. Have you ever found that out? Paul said, I, he said, don't let anybody mess with you. And he said, listen, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he wasn't talking that in, in, a, in a down way. He wasn't talking that in a discouraging way. He was wearing those scars and marks as badges of glory. Because yeah. every time he looked at a mark, he said, that's the time the devil tried to kill me and I whipped him. Yeah. See this right here? That's whenever they thought I was a goner. But God got me out of it. Hallelujah. And you see, instead of seeing any marks and scars and whatever as times he did make it, he just wore them as an honor of every time God got him through a problem. And he walked in victory. Amen.